Hi, today we're going to talk about rebating a tax. So sometimes when the government wants to increase consumer spending or stimulate the economy, what they're going to do is they're going to implement what's called a tax rebate plan. In this plan, first what the government does is they tax a specific good. We're going to denote that good by PX. So this is the original price of good X. It's going to change after the tax to the price of good X, which is PX, plus the tax of that good uh, subject to the amount of the good that you, that you consume, right? So this is going to be our new price of X after the tax is implemented by the government. Next, the government's going to give you a rebate. They're going to give you your money back so that you can then go and spend more and stimulate the economy, right? So we know that M, your, your income, is going to increase because the government's giving you money. So your income increases to M plus TX, so the amount you consumed, or the, the tax rate, times X prime, which is going to be the new demand or the, the amount... The new, the new amount of X that you're going to consume given your demand change. Next, we're going to talk about the revenue raised by collecting the tax. So as David McBroom just mentioned, the, R, the revenue that the government collects from raising uh, from the tax is going to be TX, which is the tax on good X, times the new quantity demanded for X under this tax rebate plan, which is then also going to equal to the old price of X minus the new price of X under the tax rebate plan times the quantity of X demanded under this plan. And before we move on <coughs> to the figure in the textbook, I want to talk about the substitution effect and the income effect. Substitution effect basically refers to the change in quantity demanded of, let's say, good X, uh, which, is that, which is caused by the change in relative price. Um, and the income effect refers to the change in quantity demanded for good X caused by the change in a consumer's purchasing power. So if we look at this example right here, let's assume that Y refers to the expenditure on all other goods other than good X. And let's also assume that the price of all other goods is 1. Then we get the budget constraint equation. That's PX times X plus Y equals M. Now, under the new tax rebate plan, we will then change this budget constraint equation to PX, the price of good X, added by the tax for good X, times the new quantity demanded for X, plus the new quantity demanded for Y, which would equal to the income plus TX times X prime, as David just explained. And if we multiply this out, we get this equation. And by canceling out TX times X prime from both sides, we get the equation PX times X prime plus Y prime equals 1, which would mean that the consumer is now going to consume a new bundle, X prime comma Y prime, um, which was before affordable um, under the old budget line, but was preferred over in favor of the optimal bundle they had before. So in other words, through the tax rebate plan, the consumer is worse off consuming less of good X and more of all the other goods. One thing that we also have to mention is that the revenue here is the revenue of the government. So how much the government is collecting on this tax, right? Next, we'll also assume, or not assume, but we have to, we have to know that this is from the government's perspective. So M is actually equal to the income of all consumers that are going to be buying good X. With that being said, our first budget line, or budget constraint line, is going to be shown right here, BC1, um, with our optimal bundle for the consumer being X, X uh, star, Y star. We see that here. Next, with the tax that's implemented by the government, we can show that the price of good X is going to become more expensive, meaning the consumer can consume less of good X with the income that they have available. So we see that X shifts this way on the axis. It pivots about the point that is the, the Y intercept, and it turns into this new dotted line that we can see. Now, once the rebate's issued, the government increases M for the consumers, right? Their consumers get, or their, their income gets bigger or larger. So we show a shift in income to be the shift to this new budget curve right here. Now, we know also, based on revealed preferences, that if the consumer had the choice to consume anything on this line previously, and they chose this bundle, X star, Y star, that they're not going to be consuming anything that they couldn't have already consumed before because they're rational, right? So we can automatically eliminate this whole part of the graph as 
possible to the consumer because we know they wouldn't choose it. They didn't choose it before, they won't choose it now. Meaning that this new red streaked area is going to be the place where the consumer is going to now consume. And we can also denote their new bundle as X prime, Y prime. So another important thing about the tax rebate plan is that through this, pl through this plan, the consumer is worse off. Why? Because their utility level goes down, which then means that their cons uh, the consumer's purchasing power will also go down. This can be seen by drawing two indifferent, cur indifferent curves. And let's just say this is the first indifference curve um, denoting the utility level that the consumer was first afforded under uh, the old budget constraint. With the tax rebate plan, however, after choosing this new optimal bundle under the new budget constraint line, we will get another indifference curve that will denote another utility level, one that is lower than the previous utility level. And therefore, because the utility level goes down, their purchasing power goes down, and that's why the consumer is worse off. Now,